welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing really well. As promised, in today's episode, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about all my outfits. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what I love about these, what they're great for, and just give you an overall overview of how I use them. So I'm gonna start off with the three rods in front of me. So these are the Miller Rods Grub Freaks. These are a seven foot three rod, rated one to three kilograms, and um, an absolutely stunning soft plastics rod. So, as the name implies, Grub Freak, the, you know, the rods are absolutely fantastic for throwing lightly weighted soft plastics, such as curl tail grubs. But one of the other things um, that I love to throw on these rods is the Monster Miki. So this is the little preacher bait from Domiki Soft Plastics. And I often fish these on a hidden weight head. So a 128th all the way down to 140th. And in my soft plastics video, if you guys remember, I talked about one of my other favorite soft plastics being the six inch camo worm. And the camo worm, I often fish it weightless. And the, uh, the seven foot three grub freak throws it an absolute mile for, for the, uh, the super lightweight that that plastic presents. So these are absolutely fantastic. That seven foot three length allows me to make nice long casts. They are a fast action rod. So I'm able to give the, the rod tip a nice short sharp twitch, make that plastic dart and hop and skip. And um, just allows me to work these plastics aggressively and in a style that I like. Um, the rod in front of me with the camo grip is one of the production rods. So this is a two piece rod. The rod separates at the top of the, um, the grip there. So these two come apart. The other two rods with the cork down the butt section, these are a complete one piece rod. So these are the custom rods that I had built a couple of years ago by Ian. And this is one of the production rods that I purchased last year, I believe. Um, both, oh, all three are absolutely fantastic. I'm running Diver Exists 2004s and 2003s. So this is one of the older uh, Diver Exists. I think this is a 2012 and this is a 2015, 2003 that I picked up either secondhand or from the States. Um, so absolutely love these for soft plastics. Some of the other great lures that you can throw um, on these grub freaks, they're fantastic for slow rolling really small cranks, such as Smith Camions, Cranker Cranks, Atomic Fat Cranks, Dio, uh, Jackal Chubbies, things like that. So where you need a presentation, where you need to make a nice long cast and just slow roll a, um, a little hard body and then not pull hooks once you hook up, the, um, the action through that blank is absolutely fantastic. Really absorbs all those head shakes, absorbs all those lunges, and just allows you to, um, to not pull hooks on those fish. So those are probably the two main presentations that I use these rods for, is lightly weighted soft plastics and um, small cranks when I'm cranking really slowly. The only probably limitation of these rods is I don't like to fish them any heavier than a 1 12th or 1 11th jig head any heavier than that. And I think the slightly softer tip really um, starts to feel some of those heavier jig heads. So my preferred weight is probably 1 16th on these outfits, but otherwise they're an absolutely sensational rod. The reason why I've got three of them is um, just allows me to have a couple of different options on the boat in terms of pre-rigged, you know, either leader size or different plastic presentations, but um, absolutely by far and away the best soft plastic rod I've ever used in my life. Okay, next up in my arsenal are the Miller Rods Twitch Freaks. So these are a one piece, six foot 10, two to four kilo stick, quite a fast action and uh, really a fantastic rod for twitching hard bodies. So quite often I'll throw anything from a Smith Jade, which we all know is super light, all the way up to a double clutch or a Bastet Sugar Deep 70. So, and it does everything else in between really, really well. Um, one of the other presentations that I absolutely love to use um, on these rods is stick minnows. So things such as the Tiemcos or the Oz Tackles. These rods cast them a mile. The slightly shorter nature of them just allows me to make really accurate casts around structures such as jetties, pontoons, um, bridges, boat hulls, that sort of stuff. And the fast tip action, very similar to a soft plastics rod, just allows me to give it a couple of short sharp twitches so that um, either that hard body or that stick minnow darts and jumps from side to side um, and then comes back into its normal position really, really quickly and allows me to continue working that um, lure effectively. So I've got these two paired up with Daiwa Exists 2014s 
2508 in size and a 2510. Um, running 10 to 15 pound braid on both of them. Um, in my next episode, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about braided lines and fluorocarbon leaders. And I'll just touch on you know why I run some of the braids that I do. But um, in terms of balance, I found that a 2500 size die or reel works really well with the Miller Rods Twitch Freaks and it's a, one of my favorite hard body rods. Okay, next up in my lineup are the Miller Rods Brawlers. So these are a six foot seven, two to five kilo outfit. Um, they're single piece, so again, with the cork grips, these are some of my older custom rods that I had um, made by Ian a number of years ago. Absolutely fantastic, probably my favorite rod in the lineup. Ian talks about this rod in particular on the ABT lockdown video with Steve Morgan recently, and he really talked about you know the key characteristics of the rod having that nice light tip, which just allows you to throw a soft, light, soft plastic such as Z-Man Grub or even a Cranker Crab a long way and accurately, but has so much power in that butt section of the rod that allows you to extract you know big brim, kilo, kilo and a half fish out of really tight structure. So it's an amazing blank, some great components on it, um, and probably the perfect length for such a rod. So in terms of some of the other lures that I, I use on these two rods, it's probably one, my best all-rounder. Um, I often use it to throw soft plastics out in the open at say Malakuda or along the edges of the Glenelg River. Often throw crabs around the Glenelg River, throw crabs around structure at Gippsland Lakes, around Meetung or Painesville or Newlands Arm. Um, here locally in Melbourne as well, around all our bridges, uh, around the pylons, around Williamstown and Port Melbourne. Just an absolutely fantastic rod which just does it all. Um, perfect example as well of its versatility is Steve Hume from Gippsland who's recently picked up one of these brawlers, one of the production models, his first trip out with it. He ran three pound fluorocarbon a litre and caught a 45 or a 46 centimetre brim. So not only do they do the heavy work really well, but they're also a great finesse rod. So my favourite rod in the lineup, check it out. It's the Brim Buster Brawler. Okay, so the next two in my lineup are the latest rods or latest acquisitions that um, I've added to the lineup. These are the Miller Rods Bass Freaks. Now these are a six footer, they're a two to five kilo rod. And the main reason I bought these rods was for fishing tight structure in Melbourne. So there's a couple of situations where I'm fishing under jetties and under pontoons and under uh, piers. And what I need is a short rod to be able to cast and pull fish out without hitting my rod tips on the structure above. I also needed a rod which was quite beefy, so it allows me to turn, turn heads, get those fish out of structure really quickly. So this is something that the rods do really, really well. The only downside I found with these outfits is I really wanted to pair these up with a 2500 size reel to allow me to get more line with each wind. However, due to the short nature and the really light weight of these outfits, they balance really well with a 2000 size reel and not a 2500. So I guess it's a, it's a slight downside, but it's for, for a perfectly balanced rod, a 2000 size die weight is the way to go on these. Um, the others, some of the other presentations that I use with these, for those that watched my Facebook Live the other day, I caught a lot of pinky snapper in this particular outfit on a soft plastic presentation, a little paddle tail motor oil there, um, 10 pound leader. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic rod. Still got a lot of fish out of structure on that 2000 size reel. And the other one is obviously fishing for bass, as the name implies, Bass Freak. I throw a lot of surface lures around Blue Rock Dam on the Bass Freak. Things such as cicadas, walk the dog style, walk the dog style lures. Um, it's also a really good option for guys that are, you know, creek bashing, going through in really tight spaces, in kayaks. These are a great rod for that stuff. I've also thrown a lot of stick minnows with these rods and cast them quite accurately. They are beefier than the uh, Miller Rods Brawler though, so that is something that you need to be mindful of. They're quite a beefy little stick, but they've definitely got their own place in my uh, arsenal. Okay, next up, uh, this is the last of the spin outfits for today. So what we have here are the Miller Rods Beast Busters. So these are a three to six kilo stick um, I've got these paired up with a 2500 and a 2508 die or exist. I'm running 20 pound braid and 17 pound braid 
respectively on these. An absolute beef stick, as the name implies, uh, the Beast Buster. It's a rod that I often use around structure when I'm fishing for bigger pinkies, when I'm fishing for mulloway. It's also a stick that I often use up at Blue Rock Dam fishing skirted jigs and um, slow rolling TN60 jackals. So the rod really does it all, but there are certain situations where we use these sticks just for brim. So where we're fishing really heavy timber and structure in East Gippsland, these rods caught a five brim bag of 6.93 kilograms in some very, very gnarly structure. Um, again, a lot of people would overlook these. They think they're too heavy, but there are certain situations where you need to have the right gear to get the fish out and into the boat. And that's where the Beast Busters really come into their own. Again, it's not a rod that I take out on every trip, but if I am chasing Mulloway, or if I'm chasing Snapper, or if I'm going to a couple of really, really gnarly brim spots, the Beast Busters definitely get a run. So fantastic rod, check them out. They're quite versatile. You're still able to throw, you know, two and a half inch Z-Man grubs on reasonably sized jig heads. We often throw the bigger cranker crabs um, on these. Again, caught some great fish in that tournament that I referred to earlier about that big bag on this very outfit without pulling hooks as well. So they actually have a relatively soft tip for what they are, but just so much power in that butt section um, just to extract fish and turn heads. So amazing sticks with lots of power. And finally, we come to the last two rods in my arsenal. So these two are my only bait cast outfits. So both of the rods are Miller Rods Rip Freak Rods. So they're a seven foot two, 10 to 20 pound rod. And I'm running two Daiwa Tatula bait cast reels on these. So one of them is a 6.3 to one gear ratio and the other one is an 8.1 to one gear ratio. So the reason why I run an 8.1, I often fish this outfit with skirted jigs for bass. And the reason why I've gone to a higher gear ratio is to get more line with every turn of the reel handle to um, you know, turn those fish out of structure and get them into the boat quickly. So great outfits, um, very easy to use, very easy to cast, super sensitive blanks so you feel every bite and bump through these. Um, fantastic action, allows you to make nice long casts. But look, personally speaking, I really am a spin man. So these two outfits will be going for sale soon and I will be replacing them with spin outfits, either another Beast Buster, um, maybe a Blade Freak, Ultralight, or something of that nature. So keep an eye out, I will be making some changes. And if you are interested in these outfits, send me a message. I'm just not a bait cast guy, but otherwise they're absolutely sensational. Loaded with 20 pound Sunline Siglon X8 with braid there. Um, probably used 10, 10 to 20 times in total. So they're in absolutely mint condition, but that's it in terms of my outfits and the walkthrough of all my rods and reels. As you guys saw, lots of Miller rods, lots of diver stuff. So a quick disclaimer there, I pay for absolutely everything, each one of these outfits, nothing's given to me for free. It's just something that I absolutely enjoy using. Um, I'm not trying to sell you guys on Miller rods. Those of you that use them, you know how amazing they are. And there's a reason why they're so popular um, around the country and around the world for that matter too. Um, and Diver Reels, you guys know how much I love the old exists. They're probably not the lightest, not the greatest technology anymore. But for me, there's just something about the old exists that are, it's just hard to beat. And they match up really well with some of these rods. Some of the other little comments I wanted to make around this stuff. A lot of the comments on um, Ian's website on millerrods.com.au refer to FG knots being preferred. So again, as a lot of you know, I'm a very simple angler. I like to use double uni knots and there's absolutely no issues running double unis through any of these guide sets. The only call out that I will make is if you are running double unis just like me, make a small alteration to the way that you tie your double uni knot, especially on the fluorocarbon or leader side. Don't do too many turns. For some of the heavier braking strains, all you need to do is three turns on the fluoro side and then about six to seven turns on the braided line side. And what that does is it really makes that knot nice and small and it has no issues flying through the guides. So, so that's it. That's the walkthrough of all my rods and reels. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you've got any questions about any of these rods or reels or lines that I'm using, pop your questions down in the comment section down below or send me a message on social media. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you guys next time.